The PCB board used in this project is sponsored by the PCBA company, which is one of the most experienced PCB and PCB assembly manufacturer. They create high quality PCBs with reasonable prices. The Gerbo files of the PCB board used in this project can be downloaded from the PCBA official website. You can find link in the description. This is my second tutorial on the REX RYLR890 or RYLR896 15km 915MHz transceiver module. In this episode you will learn how to make a remote sensor monitoring system using REX RYLR890 based LoRa module and Arduino. With the help of this project you can monitor any sensor within 15km range. For the best understanding I'll be using a variable resistor is the sensor which of course you can replace with any other sensor you want. The basic circuit diagram, interfacing and AD commands are already explained in my previous tutorial. If you are using the RYLR890 based LoRa module for the first time then I highly recommend first watch this tutorial which covers the extreme basics and then you can resume from here. Without any further delay, let's get started. Components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. These are the long range wireless 915 MHz radio frequency LoRa transceiver modules by the REX technology. The amazing thing about these modules is that we can change the frequencies of these modules using the AD commands, which I have already explained in my previous tutorial. These modules are designed for the long range communication up to 15 kilometers. LoRa transceiver modules can be used in IoT applications, mobile equipments, home security systems, industrial monitoring and control equipments, car alarm system, robotics, sensor monitoring and so on. This transceiver module has the processor which communicates with the Arduino through the serial communication. So the exchange of data between the RYLR890 and a microcontroller is controlled by this processor. Now let's open the data sheet and have a look at the specifications. The minimum voltage is 2.8 volts. The typical voltage is 3.3 volts and the maximum voltage is 3.6 volts. Using Arduino I can easily power up these transceiver modules using 3.3 volts. Minimum frequency range is 820 MHz. Typical frequency range is from 868 to 915 MHz. Maximum frequency range can be up to 1020 MHz. Typical range is 4.5 km. Maximum range is 15 km. Transmit current. Typical value is 43 mA. Receive current. Typical value is 16.5 milliamps. As you can see this transceiver module has a total of 6 pins which are clearly labeled as VDD, NRST which is the reset pin active low, RXD, TXD. Pin number 5 is not used while pin number 6 is the ground. As you know Arduino is based on the 5 volt controller while the LoRa transceiver module by the REX technology can handle voltages from 2.8 to maximum 3.6 volts. The typical voltage is 3.3 volts as explained earlier. From this information we know that this module cannot be directly interfaced with the Arduino. For this we need some kind of converter which can convert 5 volts into 3.3 volts. But instead of using the converter, we can use a simple voltage divider circuit. As you can see, 4.7K and 10K resistors are connected in series, which gives me 3.4 volts, which is perfect for the REX LoRa transceiver module. A wire from the middle of these resistors connected with the RXD pin of the module. The other leg of the 10K resistors connected with the ground while the other leg of the 4.7K resistor is connected with the TX of the Arduino. The RX pin of the Arduino is connected with the TXT pin of the LoRa module. 
The ground of the lower module is connected with the ground of the Arduino. The middle leg of the variable resistor or potentiometer is connected with the analog pin A1 of the Arduino, while the other two legs of the variable resistor are connected with the 5 volts and ground. This is the PCB board designed for the REX RYLR890 LoRa module. I added some extra female headers for connecting sensors, voltage regulators, etc. At the bottom side, I added two female headers for the 5 volts and ground. After I was satisfied with the PCB layout, then I generated the Gerber files and placed an online order on the PCBA official website. I have a separate video on this in which I have explained how to design a PCB and how to place an online order. You can find the link in the description. These are the PCB boards which I received from the PCBA company. As you can see the quality is really great and everything is as per the order. The silk screen is quite clear. The blue solder mask looks amazing. I'm 100% satisfied with their work. The Gerber files of the PCB can be downloaded from the PCBWay website. You can find the link in the description. As you can see, I'm done with the soldering. This is the transmitter side PCB and this one is the receiver side PCB. All the connections are done as per the circuit diagram which I have already explained. In this project, two programs are used. One program is written for the transmitter side Arduino and another program is written for the receiver side Arduino. Let's first start with the transmitter programming. This is a very simple program as you can see no libraries are used. The variable resistor is connected with the analog pin A1 of the Arduino. Then I defined a variable VR data of the type integer. This variable will be used to store the value of the variable resistor. Data length is a variable of the type integer which will be used to store the total number of digits and finally defined another variable of the type string. This variable will be used to store the complete string message. In the white setup function, I activated the serial communication. This is the default baud rate of the REX LoRa module. You can easily change this baud rate using the AD commands which I have already explained in my previous tutorial. The variable resistor is set as the input device. Then starts the white loop function. The white loop function consists of only two functions. These are user-defined functions which I created in order to make the program more user-friendly. Read resistor is a user-defined function. It has no return type and it does not take any arguments as the input. The main purpose of this function is to read the variable resistor and store the value in variable VR data and convert this value into a string value. Using the length function we find the length of the string and store the number in data underscore length variable. Sint underscore data is a user defined function. It has no return type 
and takes two arguments as the input, the sensor value and the length. I defined a variable my message which is of the type string. The AD plus send command has three parameters, the address, payload length and the data. I created a complete message consisting of the AD plus send command. Zero is the address and added the payload length and the data which is to be sent. And finally using the serial.println function, the complete string message can be sent to the LoRa module. So that's all about the transmitter programming and now let's discuss the receiver programming. I started off by defining the variables of the type string and character. In the white setup function, I activated the serial communication and selected the same baud rate. If the Arduino has received data from the LoRa module, then simply read the string and print the message on the serial monitor. So that's all about the programming. These programs can be downloaded from our website. The link is given in the description. I have already uploaded these programs. Let's watch this project in action. This is the receiver side Arduino, which I'm going to connect with the laptop. Now click on the serial monitor. I'm going to power up the transmitter side using a power bank. As you can see now, I can receive the sensor value wirelessly. You will see a change in the value as I rotate the knob of the variable resistor. This variable resistor can be replaced with any sensor which you want to monitor. In my upcoming tutorials, I will explain how to monitor multiple sensors and how to split the entire string message. Subscribe right now so that you never miss any of my upcoming tutorials. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.